one of the things that I did was a, a strip in which we explored the erotic possibilities of Swamp Thing. Um, I figured that uh, if you could fill comic book after comic book every month with fights, then surely you should be able to fill at least one comic book with a sexual act. Surely that was as interesting as a fight was. The book was very well received, and it led to me thinking seriously about the possibilities of erotica, or as I prefer to call it, pornography, because I think that the difference between the two words is largely dependent upon the income bracket of the reader. I met up with Melinda Gebby and we decided that we'd like to work upon a major piece of erotic fiction together which um, has resulted in the forthcoming Lost Girls and this entire drama is being played out against the background of Europe and specifically Austria in 1913 when everything is gearing up towards the exact antithesis of sex. It's gearing up towards what humans do when they don't put their energies into sex, which is kill each other. The, the healthy sexual drive that is seizing most young men when they're in their teens is perverted by older men who perhaps have lost some of their sexual drive and all of that sexual energy gets shipped over to somewhere like Flanders and is perverted into killing other young men energy that should be going into something honest like fucking is instead diverted into something appalling like killing there is a brain-penis blood ratio that tends to get in the way of writing intelligent pornography. If it becomes too intelligent, all the blood rushes to your brain, you lose your erection. If it becomes too sexually exciting, you are no longer in any state to appreciate its aesthetic value. So it's a difficult balancing act. My thoughts about pornography, I think, tend to revolve around the fact that while very few of us are zombies, detectives, cowboys or spacemen, there are an infinite number of books that are recounting the stories of those lifestyles. However, all of us have some sort of feelings or opinions about sex and yet the only art form which in any way is able to discuss sex or depict sex is this grubby, despised, under-the-counter art form that has absolutely no standards. This was what Lost Girls was intended as a remedy for, that there is no reason why a, a horny piece of literature that is purely about sex should not be as beautiful, as meaningful, 
and have as absorbing characters as any other piece of fiction. I've been looking at the kind of the history of magical thinking and where it starts to go wrong. And for my money, where it starts to go wrong is monotheism. I mean, if you look at the history of magic, you've got its origins in the caves. You've got its origins in shamanism, in animism, in a belief that everything around you, every tree, every rock, every animal, was inhabited by some sort of essence, some sort of spirit that could perhaps be communicated with. You would have had some central shaman or visionary who would have been responsible for channeling ideas that were useful to survival. By the time you reach the classical civilizations, you can see that this has formalized to a degree. The shaman was acting purely as an intermediary between the spirits and people. He was in his position in the village or community, I should imagine, very much like a spiritual plumber. You know, the people in the group would have had their own roles. The person who was best at hunting would have been a hunter. The person who was best at talking to the spirits, perhaps because he or she was a bit crazy, a bit detached from normal material world, then they would have been the shaman. And they would not have been masters of a secret craft. They would have simply been dispensing their information throughout the community because it was believed to be helpful to the community. When you get the actual classical cultures emerging, this has been formalized so that you've now got pantheons of gods and each of those gods will have a priest cast that will act to a certain degree as intermediaries who will instruct you in the worship of that god. So the relationship between humans and their gods, which could be seen as the relationship between humans and their highest selves, that was still a very direct one. When Christianity comes in, when monotheism comes in, then all of a sudden you've got a priest caste moving between the worshipper and the object of worship. You've got a priest caste becoming a kind of spiritual middle management between humanity and the divine within itself that it is seeking. You no longer have a direct relationship with the Godhead. The priests don't really necessarily have a relationship with the Godhead. They've just got a book that tells you about some people who lived a long time ago who did have a direct relationship with the Godhead. And that's all right. You don't need to have miraculous visions. You don't need to have gods talking to you. In fact, if you do have any of that stuff, you're probably insane. You know, in the modern world, that stuff doesn't happen. The only people who are allowed to talk to gods, and in a very kind of one-sided way, are priests. Monotheism is, to me, a great simplification. I mean, the Kabbalah has a great multiplicity of gods, but at the very top of the Kabbalistic diagram, the Tree of Life, you have this one sphere that is absolute God. The monad something that is indivisible, you know? And all of the other gods, and indeed everything else in the universe, is a kind of emanation of that god. Now, that's fine, but it's when you suggest that there is only that one god at this kind of unreachable height above humanity, and there is nothing in between, you're limiting and simplifying the thing. I mean, I tend to think of paganism as a kind of... as an alphabet, as a language. It's like all of the gods are, are letters in that language. They express nuances, shades of sort of meaning or certain subtleties of ideas. Whereas monotheism, it tends to be just one vowel, and it's just something like 
ooh, it's this monkey sound. You can almost imagine the gods becoming frustrated, contemptuous, that with all this richness of spiritual concepts that are available, why reduce it to one plaintive single note that the utterer does not even understand? <laughs> 